Well, well, here we are. Welcome to Sunset in San Pancho. Muy, muy bueno.
Well, here's the uh, first sunset. Hope you're enjoying it. Always nice to pay attention to it. Let's raise a glass tonight. Shall we? Here in uh, San Pancho, Mexico. Prodecho. Live from Dennis and Kim's Casa Acantalado. House on the Cliff. As we watch the sun sink in the Pacific. It is so nice to be back here. Thank you, Dennis and Kim, for the sunset tonight, making the view possible from Acantalado. And there it is. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us. This.
So tonight is a um, going to be a full moon. And I was reading at about 3 in the morning here, which I guess is 4 in the morning on the East Coast. There's going to be um, the longest lunar eclipse, the longest lunar eclipse in the last 600 years. Should be uh, wonderful. Uh, the the uh, moon here last night was pretty spectacular. Um, and uh, it's going to be uh, almost three hours long. Three, that's right, three hours long. Um, uh, the eclipse tonight. How long? Three, 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 three. Three hours long, 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 three hours long. Yes, that's right, three. So stay up, set an alarm. I'm 100% sure it's going to be spectacular. Let me adjust this a bit. So it's always nice to have some palm trees in a shot. Uh, these are Dennis and Kim's. Um, I think that's I think that they represent them actually. It's beautiful. And they stand overlooking the beautiful Pacific. That's exactly what they're doing. Um Provecho. I think um, to honor this wonderful country, we play a little song.
I'm going to see if I can... Uh, can you guys hear me talking? Hear my uh, voice loud enough? I'm going to try to find some... Uh, uh, Anthony Bourdain, if you remember him, wrote about Mexico. I posted it on my page uh, on Facebook. But if I can find it, I'm going to read it because it is one of the most amazing and wonderful and beautiful pieces of writing from a man that uh, that left us far too soon. Um, hopefully, can, can you hear this? Can somebody sort of say, yeah, it sounds... Uh, you can hear it okay? It would be nice to know. If I need to turn it up or something. But anyway, I'm going to assume that you, in fact, you, in fact, can hear this. Let me find it. Some of you might know Anthony uh, was a personality, huge personality, chef, pretty amazing actually he was. So um, he also uh, sort of got started as a writer. Here it is. This is what Anthony wrote, and in honor of him, <coughs> before I read it, about this fine country, Mexico, toast Anthony Bourdain. Americans love Mexican food. We consume nachos, tacos, burritos, enchiladas, tamales, and anything resembling Mexican in enormous quantities. We love Mexican beverages, happily knocking back huge amounts of tequila, mezcal, and Mexican beer every year. We love Mexican people. We sure employ a lot of them. Despite our ridiculously hy hypocritical attitudes towards immigration, we demand that Mexicans cook a large percentage of the food we eat grow the ingredients we need to make that food, clean our houses, mow our lawns, wash our dishes, and look after our children. As any chef will tell you, our entire service economy, the restaurant business as we know it in most American cities, would collapse overnight without Mexican workers. Some, of course, like to claim that Mexicans are stealing American jobs, but in two decades as a chef and employer, I never had one American kid walk in my door and apply for a dishwashing job, a porter's job, or even a job as a prep cook. Mexicans do much of the work in this country that Americans probably simply won't do. We love Mexican drugs, maybe not you personally, but we as a nation certainly consume titanic amounts of them and go to extraordinary lengths and expense to acquire them. We love Mexican music, Mexican beaches, Mexican architecture, interior design, Mexican films. So, why don't we love Mexico? We throw up our hands and shrug at what happens and what is happening just across the border. Maybe we are embarrassed. Mexico, after all, has always been there for us to service our darkest needs and desires, whether it's dress up like fools and get passed out drunk and sunburned on spring break in Cancun, throw pesos at strippers in Tijuana, or get toasted on Mexican drugs. We are seldom on our best behavior in Mexico. They have seen many of us at our worst, they know our darkest desires. In the service of our appetites, we spend billions and billions of dollars each year on Mexican drugs, while at the same time spending billions and billions more trying to prevent those drugs from reaching us. 
the effect on our society is everywhere to be seen, whether it's kids nodding off and overdosing in small town Vermont, gang violence in L.A., burned out neighborhoods in Detroit. It's there to see. What we don't see, however, haven't really noticed and don't seem to care much about is the 80,000 dead in Mexico just in the past few years, mostly innocent victims, 80,000 families who've been touched directly by the so-called war on drugs. Mexico, our brother from another mother, a country with whom, like it or not, we are inexorably deeply involved in a close but often uncomfortable embrace. Look at it. It's beautiful. It has some of the most ravishingly beautiful beaches on earth. Mountains, desert, jungle, beautiful colonic, I'm sorry, beautiful colonial architecture, a tragic, elegant, violent, ludicrous, and heroic, lamentable, heartbreaking history. Mexican wine rivals Tuscany for gorgeousness, its archaeological sites and remnants of great empires, unrivaled anywhere. And as much as we think we know it and love it, we have barely scratched the surface of what Mexican food really is. It is not melted cheese over tortilla chips. It is not simple or easy. It is not simply bro food at halftime. It is, in fact, old. Older than even the great cuisines of Europe and often deeply complex, refined, subtle, and sophisticated. A true mole sauce for instance, can take days to make a balance of freshly, always fresh ingredients painstakingly prepared by hand. It could be, should be, one of the most exciting cuisines on the planet if we paid attention. The old school cooks of Oaxaca make some of the more difficult and nuanced sauces in gastronomy, and some of the new generation, many of whom have trained in the kitchens of America and Europe, have returned home to make Mexican food and take Mexican food to new and thrilling heights. It is a country I feel particularly attached to and grateful for. In nearly 30 years of cooking professionally, just about every time I walked into a new kitchen, it was a Mexican guy who sh looked after me. He had my back, showed me what was what and what was there and on the case when the cooks like me with backgrounds like mine ran away to go skiing or surfing or simply flaked. I've been fortunate to track where some of those cooks come from, to go home with them. <clears throat> to small towns populated mostly by women where in the evening Families gather at the town's phone kiosk, waiting for calls from their husbands, sons, and brothers who have left to work in our kitchens in the cities of the north. I have been fortunate enough to see where that affinity for cooking comes from, to experience moms and grandmothers preparing many delicious things with pride and real love, passing that food made by hand from their hands to mine. In the years of making television in Mexico, it is one of the places we as a crew are happiest when the day's work is over. We'll gather around a street stall and order soft tacos with fresh, bright, delicious salsas, drink cold Mexican beer, sip smoky mezcals, and listen with moist eyes to sentimental songs from street musicians. We will look around and remark for the hundredth time what an extraordinary place this is. With the received wisdom that is Mexico will never change, that it is hopelessly corrupt from top to bottom, that it is useless to resist, to care to hope for a happier future, but there are heroes out there who refuse to go along. On this episode of Parts Unknown, we meet a few of them, people who are standing up against overwhelming odds, demanding accountability, demanding change at great, even horrifying personal cost. Yep. I would say that Anthony nailed it, wouldn't you? I miss that man.
Buenas noches, amigas y amigos. See you next sunset, okay? Thanks for joining me here tonight.